and welcome to this uh, video tutorial which is the third in a series we're making on how to create games in stencil and this is the first video in which we're actually going to look at stencil having focused upon graphics in the first two videos uh, this video is just really a short introduction to stencil and to give you a, a little tour of the interface so that you know what to expect when you first start to use it and now the, the very first thing actually in fact that you're going to need to do when you set stencil up for the first time is to make sure that you choose a save location for your games and if you're working in school you're going to need to make sure that that's set to the g drive your network drive because otherwise you won't be able to retrieve the games that you're making and you'll lose your work so if you've got any problems with that i suggest you have a chat to your teacher or one of the technicians who can help you with that but once you actually set up an instance this is the kind of thing that you will see uh, so we're just gonna have a little tour of this interface so you know what the different bits are so this is uh, in the welcome center you can see here we've got all the basic uh, these are this is my, my games section and in here I can choose to open any of the games that I've started working on already a couple of these are games which are finished games which are examples and some of the ones which I've just been been playing with uh, and there's an option there you can see to create new game that can also be done from here or even from here at the top so let's look at what happens when you create a new game um, create a new game this window pops up we're not going to use the crash course kit though if you're having a go at learning sensible by yourself you, you can use that if you like um, blank game is what we want and then it comes up with the option just to give the, the game a name which is obviously a good start so my demo game is what I'll call this one not an imaginative title but never mind and then it gives you an option to customize the screen size so this is already set to 640 by 480 for the moment I suggest you just leave it at that size and don't change it uh, and we click create it will take a moment or two to sort that out and then we will be good to go so we'll just wait for it to, to save your new game as I say just take a few seconds to do that and then we're ready and you can see we're on a very similar screen now which is our dashboard screen and our dashboard is kind of like the hub of our game creations where we can organize uh, our, our content and, and, and go to the different sections involved in making a game in stencil so down the left hand side you can see that you've got this resources tab which we can open and close from that and these are the main things that we'll be working with in stencil so if you go from really from the bottom upwards tile sets is, is what we're going to look at in the next video and that's working with the graphics that you've created so tile sets are sets of graphics which are made up of, of, of the sprites that you've got which would be things like uh, environment enemies walls stuff like that sounds is obviously like sound and music scenes is the tab that lets you work on the levels in your games and that also includes things like uh, title pages and game over screens and stuff like that fonts is if you want to import a font and you can manage the fonts that you've imported backgrounds are exactly what they sound like they might be those those would be the kind of the scenery on a level behind the actual level itself so the environment that your level set in and actor types we're going to look in a later video about what actors are but essentially the actors are going to be the objects and characters in your game so all of these things are things you're going to need to end up managing kind of yourself so if i go also the other thing to look at is this top bar here which is the settings menu and the settings menu allows you to customize a variety of things depending on how you're developing the game you're probably not going to need to spend a lot of time in here you can select um, an image for uh, for the logo if you want or an icon so if you're using this to to make a mobile game with obviously that would be very useful but really we don't need to configure anything in the settings themselves so before really you can go any further you're going to need to have created some graphics to work with but i'll just show you what happens when we move on to the different sections you can see as i go into sounds scenes fonts backgrounds actor types every single one of those screens has the same kind of layout there's a message there telling you this game contains no in this case actor types click here to create one so every time you want to add something into this category 
you will just click in that middle area and then you'll be able to import these things uh, and create these things. So obviously what we'll do is look at uh, making some of these things on an individual basis. Um, you can always return to the dashboard very easily. That will, that's a, a tab that constantly appears in your, on your screen. And you'll notice that as you add more and more content to the game, like actors, backgrounds, tiles, and things like that, that the dashboard tab will still be there. So you can always come back to, to the hub of your game. So hopefully now you're ready to start building your first game in Stencil. You need to make sure that you've got some graphics. If you haven't created some graphics or you don't know how to do that, I suggest you watch either or both of the first two videos I've made on how to create sprites. And then when you've got your sprites and you're good to go, uh, check out the next video where we'll look at how to import sprites and create a tile set.